Miss Fry has uncovered the location of the sinister cult of spies plaguing our streets. You know your orders, lads. Follow her lead, and let us rid London of this menace. Winston Churchill, 1916 Hello and welcome to Visions of the Past. My name is Andrew, and I'm the host of this Assassin's Creed lore podcast. This is episode 60, and today we're going to talk about Lydia Fry, an assassin active in London during World War I. Before we take a look at her role in Assassin's Creed, I want to take a quick look at the meaning behind her name. Lydia is of Greek origin that means woman from Lydia, which was an Iron Age kingdom that was at its largest during the 7th century BC and is now part of modern-day Turkey. But the name didn't really emerge as a popular name until it was used in Richard Sheridan's 1775 play The Rivals and in Jane Austen's 1813 novel Pride and Prejudice. The earliest origins of the Fry surname dates from the ancient Anglo-Saxon culture within Britain. This name reveals that an early member was a person who was referred to as the Fry, literally meaning free. It is also suggested that the name comes from the Middle English word fry, meaning small person or child. In either instance, the origin seemed to be a nickname of the first person who used the name. Lydia, within the Assassin's Creed series, is shown in only one place, the World War I missions in Assassin's Creed Syndicate. Born on March 19, 1893, in relative comfort in the United Kingdom, Lydia was reluctant to join the assassins like the rest of her family. Instead, she chose to focus on her studies. It was through these studies that she came to realize the extent of the Templar's influence throughout the world. This, along with seeing some of her family and friends fall to the Templars, she decided to join in the fight. As her parents were frequently engaged in missions for the assassins outside of the United Kingdom, she was trained by her grandfather, Jacob Fry, and her grand-aunt, E.B. Fry. The pair taught her how to analyze situations and to plan accordingly, but to also be flexible enough to improvise if things went wrong. Some point before the outbreak of World War I in July of 1914, Lydia fell in love with a fellow assassin named Sam Crowder, and the two married shortly before the war. During the war itself, Sam, along with many others of the British assassins, joined the army, and Lydia decided that she would stay and keep watch over London itself. After securing her grandfather and grandaunt, who were in their late 60s at the start of the war, Lydia returned to London, working to protect it from German spies, but to also keep the Templar order from manipulating the chaos brought on by the Great War. On September 23, 1916, Lydia followed a trail that led her to a handful of spies. Unbeknownst to her, though, these same spies were being tracked by Winston Churchill. The conversation that followed started Lydia on a journey across the city to root out a master German spy that Churchill was unable to do himself, as he lacked enough evidence for the government. After tracking down and assassinating the spy, Churchill thanked Lydia, and the two went on their separate ways. Lydia is one of the characters that I wish we had more time with. She has a quick wit and the skills of both Fry twins, both qualities that draw me into the character. She even uses the cookery that was the personal weapon of her granduncle, Henry Green. At the time we see Lydia, she is 23 and has a full life ahead of her. And with the comments she made to Churchill about wanting to be able to vote, we know that she's part of the women's suffrage movement in the United Kingdom. This gives us a lot of room for stories where Lydia can either be front and center or a side character in another story. Take, for instance, Assassin's Creed Conspiracies, a comic released in October 2016, one year after Assassin's Creed Syndicate. This had some sections within London that could have easily included a wink or a nod to Lydia, as if alive during this time she'd have been 47 when Eddie Gorm was asked to infiltrate the atomic program of the Nazi Germany. Sure, he was asked by two American assassins, but Lydia could easily have been name-dropped by one of the two assassins or completely take the role of Julia Dusk. Though, if I'm honest, I wouldn't want to see Evie go out the way Julia did, and though I assume that she would have known more about the Apple of Eden based on the experts of Jacob and Evie with other pieces of Eden. We just know so little about Lydia that I want to see more of her, 
We know that she's part of a prestigious family of assassins, going back at least 75 years and spanning at least four generations. And we know that not only her DNA, but that of Jacob and Evie, found its way into Abstergo's Helix server. But we don't know how it got there. Did she have a child, or did Abstergo find her name on a list of prominent assassins and found her body? I have so many questions about her life. Was she a leader in the women's suffrage movement, or a member of a women's political group like the Primrose League? What did she do after World War I when other assassins like her husband returned to London, and how long did she live? Was she still active during World War II? I know it's been five years since we saw Lydia, making it unlikely that we'll never get more of her in the future. She was just a vastly underserved character that had much more potential than what was shown. Thank you for joining me today. Be sure to tune in every Tuesday for new episodes. If you love the Visions of the Past podcast, I'd love for you to subscribe, rate, and give a review on Apple Podcasts. If you have any questions about Assassin's Creed, or topics that you'd like me to cover, please feel free to hit me up on Twitter and Instagram at visions underscore AC, and you can find those links in the show notes below. Until next time, my assassin friends, make sure to follow the creed, and to those Templars listening, may the Father of Understanding guide you.